<clears throat> Welcome to the Future Podcast. I'm your host, Sean Donlan, and I'm here today with uh, Jack Wong. Jack, how are you? I'm well, Sean. How are you? Yeah, fantastic. Thanks for uh, taking the time to come on today. Um, how are no you? Worries. Yeah, beautiful day in uh, British Columbia at the moment. Amazing. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so, yeah, uh, for a background with the podcast, for people that haven't listened before, we are a podcast that discusses, I suppose, um, working professionals and entrepreneurs in the city, and we give a little bit about their background and you know their plans for the future, how they got to where they are, things like that. So, if you wouldn't mind telling people a little bit about yourself. Yeah, uh, my name's Jack. Um, I run sort of two um, businesses. They're both sort of adjacent. Um, so by day. Uh, I work as an insurance broker, mainly working in commercial insurance, um, kind of helping business owners sort of, you know, figure out kind of what the risks are, how, how to best manage that um, with a, you know, kind of risk management portfolio. Some of it is insurance. Some of it is other things, right? Get your firewall, you know, do these, get your alarms installed, do these different things. Um, the second kind of portion of my work is I run a kind of training business, training and compliance for regulated industries. Um, so working primarily right now in financial services, but we're also going to be going into the healthcare uh, space with different regulated professionals. Okay. Can you tell us a little bit more about that, uh, training company that you have? What sort of, what sort of businesses, you know, hire your services? Yeah. So for example, um, let's talk about insurance then. Um, so if you want to become an insurance broker, you have to pass these certain exams. Um, and then every year you have to maintain a certain you know, level of professional development, or we call them continuing education credits. Um, so we provide all of that stuff uh, primarily online. So this kind of COVID thing has been um, kind of good for us, uh, fortunately. Um, so we're being kind of used at a couple different, <clears throat> couple different brokerages. Um, a lot of the big ones that you might have heard of, broker lane cooperators, um, those sort of people, uh, but also by individuals as well. Okay, and how long have you had that uh, company? Uh, we've been doing it for two, two and a half years now. Good. What have you found your biggest uh, struggles getting things moving for? Um, in the beginning, it was regulation. Um, so, you know, it's a tightly regulated kind of industry. You have to get, you know, everything accredited. You have to apply to the different councils and just getting that paperwork, uh, getting that approval. Um, especially when I started, I was like, 26 or something um so it's kind of hard when you go in there with a bunch of these you know old guys very seasoned guys yeah and then you're telling hey i want to do this like you have to you know get them to to believe that okay maybe you know something right yeah exactly so how are you holding up with everything that's going on not too bad um i've been working from home for the last couple of years so it hasn't been too much of a shift okay. um i did um right around mid to late March, when kind of the walls came down, um, I moved out of my uh, downtown condo back into the family home because I figured if I was going to be stuck somewhere for, you know, two months, one month, whatever it is, I don't want to be in a 500 square foot condo in downtown yeah, yeah, in a yeah. building with like 300 people. I'd rather be in a place with the backyard, some trees, you know, some flowers. It's a lot get nicer. Some, get some nice home cooking. Yeah, good idea. Really good idea. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. How about yourself? Uh, well, I um, I'm living in yeah, I'm living in one of those uh, micro uh, apartments in downtown Vancouver. So, but I'm surviving, thankfully. Can't complain too much. Yeah. Get out and about as much as I can. Um, I guess it's tragic that everything that's happening. But I I, I believe that you're more likely to die. Uh, at our age in a, you know, in a car crash um, on your way to your office or on your way to wherever you're going. So uh, I don't want to live my life in fear, but I would really like uh, for the people who are, you know, compromised and at risk and um, for those people to have a chance as well. So I definitely understand why we're doing what we're doing, but I don't know how sustainable this all is. And I hope that we can come to some kind of a, maybe like a Sweden um, kind of a setup sooner rather than later where people who are highest at risk are advised to stay indoors and take care of themselves and the people then like you and me can help keep the economy moving and pay our tax and keep those people 
in you know keep those people safe so we'll uh, we'll see how things go it, it, listen it's unprecedented you know nobody nobody really knows what what to do um so i don't presume to have any answers um but enough about me and um, tell us a little bit about your uh, professional background and how you got to where you are today yeah um i was actually trained in as a computer scientist so i did a computer science degree at sfu um and i realized kind of i'd say three quarters of the way through my degree that maybe i wasn't very good at it um i did finish it but uh i remember there was this one assignment um it was in an ai algorithms class and we had to do like a knight's tour essentially you have a chessboard you have a knight piece so you can only kind of move in l shapes and um you have to start the piece anywhere and it would have to traverse all the squares uh, without repeating one, right? <clears throat> so it's kind of like a pathfinding type algorithm. Um, I did the assignment, but I did it in, th I would like three, 400 lines of code. Uh, I looked at a friend of mine, he did his in 24. And I was oh. like, I was thinking in my mind, I'm like, okay, there's something here that I'm not understanding about the way this works, right? I'm not, uh, it's not for me. Um, so I finished the degree, but I decided not to kind of pursue a career, you know, in, in programming or software development. Um, and I got into sales and insurance. And then sort of here I am. Yeah, well, good for you for finishing it, you know. I always find that it's absolutely insane that we ask, uh, you know, teenagers to pick a, teenagers or young 20-year-olds to pick a, career path that they're going to choose for the rest of their life when they, they have to put up their hand to use the bathroom, you know, and you're asking them to pick a career that's going to define them for the rest of their lives. So good for you, man, for um, actually finishing it, you know, that's. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. No, it's a big choice to make at 17, 18, like, awesome. you know, you're just coming out and you have to make this giant decision about how to spend four years of your life and 40, $60,000. It's, uh, yeah. it's a weird, it's a weird decision to be making at that age for sure. Think of all the, you know, I know for me, think of all the stupid things that you do when you're, you know, 17, 18, and 19, and you're asked to, you know, decide the rest of your life. Like you said, you had to take out a big, a big student loan and go from there. Um, yeah. Uh, what about your industry? How have you seen your industry change in the last, you know, five to 10 years? But I guess five years for you. Yeah. Um <laughs> have been around that long. Um, <laughs> last five years, I would say, you know, insurance, it's a bit of a slow moving, it just moves at a glacial pace. Like we, we have brokerages that are still very much paper based, yeah. um, which is pretty ridiculous. Really? One of the first, yeah, yeah, they still have their stacks. It's kind of like when you go to the doctor's office, they have those like paper files in the back. Very similar. It's very strange, um, strange experience. Um, so one of my first jobs actually in the insurance industry was to scan all these papers and, and transition everybody kind of to the digital system. So that was like a summer job for eight fifty an hour or something like that. Um, but, you know, kind of getting to read those files and, and kind of understanding it, um, getting that knowledge was, I think, very helpful. Um, I think over the last five years, a lot of insurance brokers have changed online, especially now in the last two months that's just completely accelerated where everyone is now looking at going paperless and trying to figure out how we can work in a more distributed or basically more efficient way. Yeah. It's interesting, isn't it? It seems that in the last six months, a lot of uh, industries have, you know, moved, we'll say, or grown, you know, at, at what it would look, what it would take five years, you know, it's, it's really eye opening. Yeah, people were talking about how, you know, the pandemic's going to change change things, change the way businesses operate. I don't think it's so much going to change it as it is going to accelerate different changes that were already happening. They're just going to happen faster. And what about insurance for pandemics? Was that something that, you know, you guys have ever seen or is that something that exists? So that does exist. Um, wow. Most commercial insurance policies um, we'll have a business interruption component. Um, so there's a big kind of court case and different um, arguments going on up right now about whether pandemics would be covered. Um, so I guess one of the core arguments is 
most of your business interruption policies will only cover physical losses, right? Yeah. So the point of contention is whether contamination. So, you know, somebody with COVID, right, comes into your premises, they contaminate the place. So the argument is whether that counts as a, as a physical loss or not. Um, there's also a actions of a civil authority clause in most of these policies, um, where if your business has to shut down because of an action of a civil authority, you get coverage typically for up to two weeks. Um, so those are kind of what's being argued in court right now. Obviously, the insurance companies don't want to pay. Oh, yeah, because if everybody that has insurance gets this payout, all the insurance companies in the world go under. Yeah, exactly. It's like half the economy, right? So. Yeah, yeah. Wow. It's unbelievable, isn't it? You know, that everybody is in the same, exact same position. It's like, it's the ultimate black swan. You know, it's... it's yeah. Like, you know, it's just, like we said, totally unprecedented. And how have you found, you kind of, how have you found it's changed the industry right now? Like, what are the, what are the major, major changes that you've seen in insurance? I know you've said you've seen things speed up. Are you meeting people face to face? Is that absolutely out of the question right now? What's going on for you? Personally, I'm not meeting anyone face to face right now. If they ask and they really kind of want to, you know, I'm comfortable with that at this point. So I don't really, you know, have an issue. But kind of what's happening now is we're doing a lot of, um, a lot of Zoom calls, right? A lot of Skype. Um, also, what I've started doing, if I find it difficult to get a time with with the client. Um, what I'll do is I'll record a video on Loom. So what I'll do is, for example, if I have an insurance proposal, I'll kind of walk through it on Loom, just record myself going through the document, highlighting different things and, and explaining different things, similar to what I would, you know, if I had to present to a client um, in real life or, or on Zoom, and I just send them the video. So whenever they have time, they can watch it. That's brilliant. And how have your, how have your clients you know, responded to that? I, like, I really like that touch. Actually, they like it more. So I think I might do less Zoom calls and just more recording because I can do them anytime. They can watch them anytime. Super simple. Yeah. And I guess no possibility of lag or, um, you know, the call dropping or something. It's just a simple, clear message. Exactly. So less interruptions. And it's just a lot cleaner, I think. So are you at any kind of... Um, risk for compliance or regulatory bodies by like sending those kind of videos and stuff or do you just keep within the correct structure and everything is secure for you then and safe um no there's there's no real issue there um it's actually better for compliance because then everything you know sometimes when you have a zoom call you have a phone call it sort of becomes like a he said she said type of situation yeah okay uh, whereas with these kind of you know recorded presentations everything's there you know you retain a copy of the video so there's no uh, ambiguity about, you know, what was said or what was being done. And what kind of insurance are people getting right now? Um, just the standard stuff, you know, um, the commercial uh, aspect has started to pick up a little bit. You know, in the last, I would say, when this thing first kind of started and the walls first came down, you know, a lot of people looking to start new businesses or to renew their policies were a little bit tentative because they weren't sure whether they're gonna actually be around or not, right? But now that it looks like we're starting to come out of this, um, people are starting to, you know, pick up on the on the commercial insurance side. Okay. And what do you feel then, you know, the biggest um, changes are going to be? What, like, what do you think, when do you think it's all gonna end? Uh, or, you know, you guys can kind of resume business as usual? I think it depends on the brokerage. Um, some are way better prepared for this than others. Um, I think with this, as with almost any kind of major, you know, like you said, black swan, like major destructive event, we're going to see the brokerages or the businesses that were strong come out even stronger. The businesses that were already weak, they're just going to get called. Unfortunately, I think that's just how it is. Yeah, I think so. I think we're probably going to see a a little bit of a uh, can't recall a little a depression, I suppose. You know, I think I read somewhere recently. Well, I did that. Uh, Alberta and Quebec right now have uh, Quebec have twenty seven percent of mortgages are in arrears, 
and Alberta has 86% mortgages in arrears. I don't think BC is too far behind them either, you know? So you're talking about, like that's totally unprecedented, you know, overnight. You know, how do you, how do you restart an, an economy? Like my, my question is how many people out there right now are just unemployed, but they don't know that they're unemployed because they're, you know, their business just kind of hasn't reopened uh, inverted commas as of yet. You know, it's, it's going to be incredible to see how, how we get out of this, you know, and if, um, and if printing more money solves the problem, like, is it going to be a situation that we just, we print more money and it's like a rising tide raises all ships, you know, the U S print more money, Europe prints more money, Canada prints more money and just, you know, U S stimulus package number 20 or whatever, <laughs> whatever it's going to be helps the, all the economies um, move forward. Yeah. I hope we don't do too much of that because we'll have to pay it back eventually, you know? And, uh... Oh yeah. Like I guess we're, we're spending billions and billions of dollars right now, even, you know, so it's just taxes are going to, taxes are going to increase. Oh, hundred percent. Um, I remember hearing a friend of mine talking about they're going to do a COVID tax or something like that to try to recoup some of the, some of the spend. Um, yeah, who knows? Um, yeah, it's an interesting time to be playing offense if you can. Yeah, they have to do something. So I, I'm um, I'm from Ireland, and there was a thing introduced in Ireland called the Universal Social Charge after the 08, 09 recession. I don't know if they still have it, but it was basically just like a, somewhere between 100 and 300, I think, euro. Now, I don't know the exact number, but it was just this charge that they put into every single Irish citizen's residence or pay package. And that was it. You just paid this universal social charge and it went towards basically paying off the banks that we bailed out in the great financial crisis. And that was just the banks. We, we basically bailed out every industry there is. Now, how are we gonna, how are we gonna pay back those people? Yeah, it's, it's, it's wild. Was it 100 to 300 bucks a year? Is it every month? Like, no, it was every month. It was every month. Cool. And it was just like this line on your payslip, you know? And I was like, What's, what is this? You know? Universal uh, so social charge. And um, yeah, it was, it's, uh, it's a really, really unique uh, time. Um, say if somebody was starting off in your industry today, what. Uh, what advice would you give them? If you're going to start off in the insurance industry today, what advice would I give them? Find a good brokerage to, to work at. Um, there's a huge variance between different brokerages based on what you're looking to do. So if you're looking to be a producer, right, to you know, go around, shake hands, kiss babies, um, you need a brokerage that can support that. Um, <clears throat> you need one with a lot of contracts in the niche that you want to target. Um, and you want kind of your marketers or the staff at the brokerage to be really, really responsive and be able to kind of get you your quotes and, and support you, um, in your kind of sales efforts. Otherwise it's just super hard and you're just fighting an uphill battle. Okay. Okay. Brilliant. Jack, listen, uh, we're almost out of time here, so I just want to thank you very, very much for coming on the podcast. And um, can I ask you if people are looking to get in contact with you, where they should, uh, where they should reach out? Yeah, if you're looking for some help uh, with your insurance stuff, you can email me at uh, jack.wong.insurance at gmail.com. Or if you want to kind of take some professional development courses, uh, you can go to courses.pnclearning.com. Brilliant. Jack, thanks again. Um, wishing you all the best in this uh, really strange time. Thanks, Sean. You as well. Looking Thank forward you. to going to some of the in-person events later. Yeah, brilliant. Thank you.